Ooh. Anybody got any predictions for this? I'm afraid to even say I have no idea how this fight's about to go down. But I will tell you this. This fight right here, 2-0, 2-0, this is a perfect time for these guys to meet, honestly, 100%, because one of them is going to face a defeat, but that's what's going to make them yeah. two studs I, in this cage. Whoever wins, whoever right. loses, it doesn't matter. Yeah, They're seen, still two monsters. I've seen Polizzi fight how many times that I've trained a little bit, Cedric, and I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I, I honestly, truthfully don't. It's going to be great. Got to look And I tell you from. what, the interwebs, have been going crazy over this fight. Absolutely, crazy. as we hear from Josh Perry and Gerald Mearshart talking about our main event of the evening. Yeah, at 205 pounds, and it is a beauty. Yeah, I gotta tell you, you know, back when uh, Polizzi first started fighting uh, here, he didn't he didn't sell many tickets, didn't have a lot of fans. Alec, or, uh, Mark Lemminger had sold this half this venue out. As the tail of the tape, showing Alex Polizzi and Cedric Savage right there. And here he comes with those legs and all. Check out those thighs. Easy Polizzi making his way to the cage and also an undefeated career. 2-0 as a pro, 6-0 as an amateur and rarely tested. But tonight will be probably the first night of the career of Alex Easy Polizzi where his defense is going to be tested tonight against a very tough opponent in Cedric Savage, an opponent who, by the way, has every right to believe as much as Polizzi does that he is going to come away victorious in this fight. Gentlemen, this bout is brought to you by Burns and Sanction by the Department of Safety and Professional Services Program Director, Mary Murphy Edwards. Your cage side position for this bout, Dr. Richard Barney, your judges, Gangsta Beta, Rick Winter, and Anthony Frostel, with timekeeper Mike Rogers, and the man in charge of this bout, veteran referee, Rob Mandel. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen, this is your main event of the evening. Three rounds in our light heavyweight division. Introducing first, this man fighting on the Rod Performance Motorsports red corner. He is undefeated. Two bouts, two victories. He weighed at 203 and one half pounds and fights on a roof. His opponent is this man, standing across the cage and fighting out of the Kearns blue corner. He weighed in at 202.6 pounds. He is also undefeated. Two bouts, two victories. He hails from right here. The crowd is ready, we are ready. The Paisan Powers looking for a clean sweep here at the top of the card. Polizzi and Savage main event time at Chosen Few Fighting Championships number 16. Here we go. Good Ooh. kick by Savage right to the right side of the head of Polizzi. Polizzi answering with a kick of his own and now Going for the takedown, but can't get it easily against Savage. Yeah, that is two big dudes right there. Two big, big guys. And then you see Cedric getting it on a leg. Looking for a takedown of his own and scrambling right back to the feet. Not something we see a lot with people going against Polizzi is looking for their own takedowns. So one, thing I really, one thing I really like about this fight, too, is the gym versus gym aspect. Madison versus Milwaukee. Chosen Few versus Rufus Sport, two guys that are gonna have experienced cornermen and fighters in their corners. If you look across each cage, you've got a 60 fight veteran in Damian Decora, one of the best jujitsu for MMA coaches in Kane Rizzo and the Chosen Few side. You've got Dan Vanderlei, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, Coach Kush over there for Rufus Sport. You're talking about elite, elite level young fighters, oh. elite, elite level young coaching staffs and great schools. And this is what main events are truly made of here. 
And it's a veritable who's who of MMA here in Wisconsin. And what a matchup between Savage and Easy Polizzi. As Polizzi, again, we have not seen him on the defensive too many times in his career. I mean, from an amateur all the way on up, we have always seen him. You talked about the bully factor. I mean, this guy is as scary as they come, and we've rarely seen him being backed up or being manhandled as Savage is doing a little bit of here in the first round. You don't ever see anybody as strong as him. And now we're finally seeing that here. You can tell Cedric is a put together guy and he's got some great upper body strength. He's got great positioning. His legs are almost exactly the same size as Polizzi's, if not even a little bit bigger. So, I mean, great matchup put together by Steery and the rest of the bunch here. Yeah, Cedric's a big dude. And one thing he does really well is he understands the tie clinch pretty well and mixes it well with his wrestling. Polizzi definitely has the advantage in traditional folk style wrestling. We see him get the double underhooks right here. But Cedric is no slouch in being that strong and athletic. It definitely gives you an advantage mixed with not only is he a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, so he has some grappling knowledge there, but just the clinching knowledge is he is more of a striker. Yeah, I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but uh, Cedric did open up a cut on uh, Polizzi on the right-hand side with that elbow that he threw, so he's got that. Going back to that Chosen Few versus Rufus sport, I love it, man. You know why? Because there's very few um, gyms in the state that will accept fights against Rufus Sport guys or vice versa. So you have all these early on pros that want to pick all their wins and pick all their fights and all that other things. But you have these tough guys, both 2-0. and Hey, let's let these guys figure it out. They're early on in their pro careers. This is the best time for these guys to meet right now. That's right. And nothing but respect for both gyms. You know, I've always had a great relationship with Josh and all the guys at Chosen Few. And back in the day, we even cross-trained when I was at Strasser's and other places and ACS. And, you know, I know they got nothing but respect for us. And why not, if you got the best, you know, local guys or the best up-and-comers, let them fight. Figure it out. You know, we'll fight in the cage, but we're gentlemen. And, you know, we like each other outside the cage. So this is a really cool thing to see in the local MMA scene. Yeah, absolutely. And a shout-out to Duke Rufus, too, because he's been a mentor of mine for years. And I always reach out to him a lot for, you know, uh, guidance and different things like that for our up and comers and he's been a huge help so thank you Duke Rufus for everything you've done for the sport here in, in, in Wisconsin. One thing that that has been really sneaky about Cedric here is he every once in a while throws quick elbows mm -hmm. quick inside kind of dirty boxing little hooks and he's landed a few times with that and you never know again we've never seen Polizzi take any damage so is this going to keep adding up? I mean, it's really sneaky with those punches. It's really impressive. Yeah, Josh talked a little bit about one of those elbows opening up a cut on Polizzi, and you do see it um, as he's getting those elbows in, and now the blood on the side of the head of Polizzi as well. Not, not too much of a factor, not affecting his eyesight at all, so he seems to be okay in there right now and seems to be weathering the storm. Right, and that's what I was talking about before. He is pretty knowledgeable in that tie clinch in that dirty boxing area where he'll sneak in little strikes and get you off balance here and there. And, you know, right now, seeing both big guys taking a little bit of breath, Cedric looks like he might be getting a little more tired, but he's still, you know, they're working in there. They're pushing each other around. They're jockeying for position. So it's going to be really interesting to see if this goes to the second round, how these guys come out and who's fresher. Yeah, this well, is definitely a gas tank fight. It really is. Barring somebody landing a big shot and ending it, you're really going to see who's who come mid-second round into the third. I think that's key, you guys, in those heavyweight, those light heavyweight fights, right? Seeing how, if they can survive that first round and see what happens in that second round. You got a, a, a Division One collegiate wrestler that that's used to the grind. You got a, a really, really good kickboxer that has been at the top of his game for a long, long time. But when you get pressured against the cage like that, you get, you know, leaned on against a heavy guy that's good at controlling. We'll see what happens, man. Main event action from round number one as you take a look at Alex Polizzi and Cedric Savage in the first round. Both guys getting shots in. Who do you guys think got the better in round number one? Man, I'm going to be honest. I'm not sure how to score that. You know, we were so involved talking about it and just watching them go back and forth. I mean, Cedric opened up a cut on Polizzi, but Polizzi, I felt like he, I wouldn't say surged back, but he came back in the second half and controlled a little bit more, but a really, really even round. This is a judge's nightmare round, but the way you can kind of dig in a little bit is two ways. One, control. So who controlled most of the round? And that's where he was talking about Skiro, or I'm sorry, <laughs> Polizzi coming in uh, second half. But what I'll tell you is they're also, they've also upgraded what damage counts as when they're giving points away. And those little shots that Savage landed and the fact that he's cut Polizzi open, you never know if the judge is going to see that as a little bit better. So 
again, this is one of those fights you don't want to be a judge in, but it could go either way. Both of these fighters as pros have never gone to the second round. Again, early in their careers, both at 2-0, and oh, but they like to finish early, so this is uncharted territory as pros for both of them right now. You oh. talked about conditioning in round number one. Yeah, Police, he's looking for come a guillotine, play. and then Cedric's out of there. Cedric's moving, the way he's moving right now, he's still flowing, but I feel like he's a little bit tired. Yeah, and that's where the conditioning comes in. You mentioned it right at the end of the first round. You thought Savage looked a little bit more gas than Polizzi did, and that might be what's showing here in round number two. Right, and Polizzi's kind of high, but he's got some deep hooks in right now, and he's got Cedric in a bad way. Cedric's got to move, and it's a lot harder for big guys to get out of these bad positions. So if he doesn't start shrimping, isolating a leg, and like making some space, this is going to be a really tough spot to get out of, and the ref is going to take a close look at this. Polizzi trying to do damage on Savage, trying to soften up the big guy as a big dog needs to bark back right now. It's easy Polizzi on top and Savage in trouble. Now we see Savage building his base, getting his butt up, but he's got to either get his butt up and shake Polizzi off the top or turn and start shrimping to get one leg out and at least get to half guard to try to work back to his guard or get to half guard and work some sweeps. So he's not... Uh, he's close to getting, not too close to getting finished right now, but this is not a good look, and the ref is really close to him, so he's got to show him something. And what I, I want to comment on that too, Jared, what we've seen with this ref so far tonight as he pulls the plug. He doesn't let he does. fighters get yep. too deep into the damage, and he'll pull the plug on you if you're not defending yourself. And Polizzi can't do damage. We have seen him before in this cage break ribs, and you know those shots are hurting right now as Savage is going to have to do something to fight back the yeah, ref awfully have to, close to stopping this fight. He's going to have to not worry about defense and just move. If he doesn't worry about the defense, he might have to eat a little bit, but if he keeps moving, he'll be okay. He's got to get out of it. Polizzi still raining down blows on Savage right Right now and now looking to get the hooks in once again as he has really hurt Savage here in the second round. Now some more shots to the side of the head as Polizzi doing major damage here in round number two. All right, he seems tired. How much now the elbow to see you guys. Savage doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot besides just holding his hands up. He's right. not trying he, to he's gotta, he's gotta show something here. He's gotta start moving. He's got a some kind of explosion. Maybe just try to barrel roll and turn, give up mount, see if you can pop out from there because it's not working right now. Not at all. Polizzi, oh, those elbows can really hurt now as we have seen him open up fighters before with those elbows that he uses as razors and digging in to the side of the head of Savage. And Savage has not mounted any kind of counterattack for quite some time. This is over. I don't know what the ref's waiting for uh, here. Yeah. He hasn't improved his position in a while. You know, this would you, be you a good point now. Happen. Yeah, uh, to stop this. Yeah, I'm, I'm Cedric's teammate. I don't think he needs to take too much more of this. He hasn't shown me anything. As we said, he builds back up, but if he doesn't get up from this, I, it's we got to be close. Polizzi again stretching him out, again landing There's blows no and way. elbows, yeah, and that yeah, yeah. is it. Alex Polizzi finally gets the stoppage that he wants, and hopefully not to the damage of one Cedric Savage as that was a Savage beatdown by Alex hey. Polizzi, especially in the round they got the number back of the head. two. I mean, absolutely unbelievable as Alex Polizzi improves to 3-0 and in impressive fashion against one tough customer in Cedric Savage. We will get the official word right after this on TVW. All right, checking out the finish here by Alex Polizzi, and it was about a 90-second finish of raining down blows on Cedric Savage from lefts and rights to the side of the head to elbows in the back of it. Alex Easy Polizzi really took over in the second round and finished off Savage. Yeah, he just got he got those the back control. He got the hooks in, spread Savage out, and you know Cedric to his credit, he was trying to work and trying to get out, but just. Too much ground and pound and couldn't find a way out of it. First ever loss on an amateur or professional level for Savage. Alex Easy Polizzi improves to 3-0 as he remains perfect with the win over Savage here tonight as everybody showing mutual respect here in the cage as we go now to Chris Garrity.
The Python Power sweep at the top of the card tonight. Alex Polizzi, a winner.